<laughs> Hello, I am Andras Tori. I run Outbrain's uh, recommendations and machine learning department. Today, I'll be, th I'll, be, I'll be talking about how AutoML is eating the world or our world. Let me now start with the share. Ha, hopefully you can see the slides. So, um, the topic of today's conference is AutoML, and my thesis is that AutoML will change our world, world of working data scientists, machine learners, especially in the, in the, in the industry. Uh, I, of course, stole this or rephrased this sentence from something that Mark and Richard, um said actually exactly 10 years ago, which is that software will eat the world. Um, what, what does it mean? What does it mean for something to eat the world in, in this concept? Well, it means that everything that can be automated will be automated, that uh, no industry will kind of uh, escape automatization, digitalization. And Mark and Richard, uh said that 10 years ago, August 20th, uh, uh, 2011, just as the, the kind of the uh, trust in digital was rebuilding, you know, after the dot-com boom and everything else, the digital was coming back. And the big trend was, uh, of course, software, not hardware as companies from, from earlier decades. And uh, the, the, the real thing about software is that it really centralizes, uh, centralizes data. I, I'll talk to you just as an example about SaaS software as a service as being a kind of prerequisite of machine learning. Why? Uh, SaaS kind of mandates that software moves to the cloud, software gets centralized, software moves away from on-prem in which we were running it in 90s, in uh, 2000, into the cloud. By moving into the cloud, it means that the data gets centralized. By data being centralized, it means that it's available easily for analysis, data science, and machine learning. Um, of course, this also means that when you are able to, to add any kind of additional value through those activities, you have a single point where you have to apply that optimization, that algorithm, that efficiency improvement, and it will kind of automatically um, be applied to the whole network, the whole value chain of your software. Of course, SAS is not the only type of prerequisite. Uh, on the other hand, we have like, you know, a massive uh, mobile deployment, which means that we're able to gather massive data sets of sound, of video that wasn't possible before. But really this enormous amount of data are leading to machine learning being now basically everywhere, um, leading to places that we haven't thought before. Uh, sales, HR, marketing, advertising, autonomous driving, uh, manufacturing, travel, every single industry like software uh, ate it initially will also be uh, eaten by machine learning, by data science, by AI, we are a bit more uh, bombastic, right? So number of places is completely exploding where, where we could apply uh, principles of machine learning of uh, data science. Now, before going on, while the number of places is exploding, we also need to be aware that a lot of proposed applications of AI and machine learning are, you know, um, not, uh, not very, um, uh, real, in a sense that sometimes we're trying to predict data, uh, predict things that couldn't be predicted from the data, or predict uh, social outcomes, outcomes that have enormous amount of uh, chaotic behavior or uh, variables that we haven't captured at all uh, in the in the in the in our data. So th those are the two kind of frequent problems. So the data we deal with as data scientists, as machine learners, are is you know, I, I'm sure you, every one of you was at the project where some um, project uh, product manager, CEO comes with a brilliant idea how they will predict something and then you look at the data and you see that the, 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 even from the first glance that the prediction uh, kind of capability out of that data to the variable you're trying to predict is very weak or it, it doesn't, you don't have the data that you need to, to do the prediction you want. Uh, so that's that's one issue with, uh, I would say, uh, a lot of bullshit in, that's being solved as machine learning, AI that will change our cities, that will change our jobs, uh, and similar, right? Um, I think we, we've all uh, read stories about, you know, HR resume screening that was done by software that was learned on data that was effectively for the job 
garbage because it was already pre-filtered uh, from the existing employees, et cetera. Um, so this is one issue, but th there's another issue with ML. So even when it works, we, even when we can do uh, prediction models that are that are good, that can, can improve something, the improvement might be in a relatively unimpactful part of the business or it, the, when we are starting a business, it only matters after all other parts of the business are actually working. You know, if you're, again, doing some AI, some machine learning in, uh, in let's say, again, HR software that will help, uh, help, uh, help you target people better, well, the problem is that if it's not a good HR, HR software to start with, then machine learning doesn't really matter in the success of the company or the success of the business, right? So these are two, two problems with machine learning, either not having the right data uh, to, to do the job or the job can be done, but it doesn't really matter. It's like more of a, a vanity for the, for the company than a true needle mover in the success of the business. So with all these uh, kind of disclaimers, I still want to say that the world is getting amazingly better for us data scientists, machine learners, right? Um, the number of companies that actually have good data is growing immensely. Number of companies where ML is at the core, not you know, a site thing put up and put on at the top as for marketing purposes, is also growing. And the companies themselves are scaling. They're, they have a larger size, which means we have a larger leverage as a, as a data scientist to actually move the needle for the business. So from the, from the rest of the talk, I'm not assuming that, I'm, I'm not talking about all these issues with, with Alter ML. Let's assume that the data is super high quality and we can actually predict or solve worthwhile problems with the data we have inside some industry, inside some company. So everything is awesome. However, what's the problem? Well, from the company's perspective, from the business perspective, um, it's still not a, a simple deal. A data science, machine learning, AI is very expensive to staff. I think you, you've all uh, either seen or participated in latest service uh, about uh, compensation and similar. So it's, it's, it's a hard, hard to staff area, extremely competitive to, to hire. But even if you manage to do that, it's really usually slow to get to a useful model. Why? Because we first have to get the data in shape. We have to work a lot on how data is collected, filtered, adjusted, et cetera, before we can even start modeling. And then modeling uh, happens fairly, fairly quickly compared to the whole data, data get data. But even when we have the model and all that, then delivering it in production, making it production ready, whether that means online, whether that means uh, that we have taken care of all the biases, that we have kind of taken care of all the, the edge cases, is, is a problem. It, it's a problem that basically takes time, human time, to evaluate all the aspects of the issues that could arise. Now, we uh, are data scientists, our engineers. We are getting paid to automate stuff. Our models effectively automate decisions, decisions that would otherwise be done by humans. And there's like a good question, like if we have all these capabilities, why aren't we automating ourselves? Why aren't we automating our own jobs away? Like we're automating some other menial tasks that now machines can do. Um, and the question then is, okay, but you know, this is, this is um, kind of, you know, high science. You need to have domain knowledge. You, you need to have multiple years of training. Um, can it really be? automated like um is this only another dream as we are we are we are um uh, we are sometimes selling of what ai can do is this automation also a dream because in reality uh you have problems that you need humans for highly trained humans and i just copied here like things that uh, are repeatable tasks as, as mentioned on automl.org pre-process and cleaning data selecting features, optimizing hyperparameters. You all know, you, you do this, we all do this every day, right? But we always think, at least you, at first, like, you know, this, this requires deep human insight. This requires deep domain knowledge. Um, so when we say, okay, we want to automate this, can we really do it? 
Now I want to switch to um, quickly that I think that there are two needs for automation, two different areas that have a lot in common, but are really two separate paths. And one is making machine learning as easy to use for non-experts, like basically making it uh, democratic in a sense. And then there is a different problem that happens in somewhat different companies where you really want to make your experts 10x, 20x more effective. Uh, so the use case one is make machine learning easily useful by non-experts. Make its application of ML more affordable. This is, you know, the, the typical, you throw in the data, you pick the target label, the metric, and then have some fun. Maybe the tool gives you some insights back, maybe not, but maybe mostly you get the model out or you get the predictions or uh, some kind of analysis of anomalies or similar. And there are a lot of uh, companies, especially big platform companies, so, here we're, we're looking at Microsoft, um, at uh, Google, at Amazon, that are trying to kind of move themselves towards this, uh, this functionality. And I think we'll also be, be hearing about uh, pick on what, what they have uh, very soon now. Um, so this is, this is one track. And I think uh, it's very important, even if we are deep in the weeds, it's a very important thing to be aware of, of how far these tools have come already. Now, the second track is basically make experts 10x more effective. This, is, this usually happens, well, the first track usually happens in the companies where, or where machine learning AI is kind of you know, a side thing, uh, something that to optimize the processes a bit more, to, to get a bit more of zing out of whatever, whatever uh, product feature there is. But the other type of companies is basically companies that 100% have the, the ML machine learning, AI, in, in the core of their uh, business spin wheel. Um, examples are, of course, I know, Google Search, Google Ad Business. Um, the same with the Outbrain. We, like every single 0.01% uh, improvement in metric has tomorrow, literally tomorrow, uh, impact on our own business, business KPI. Uh, and there are quite a few companies that have this kind of, you know, large problems that were immediate, like the application, whether you have an increase in business after you, um, you apply some solution or do a test, it, it, you get an answer in a matter of hours, but most days. So this kind of companies, uh, SL, Ray, Google, et cetera, we're, we're willing to invest enormous amount of time into making our ML a better, better for that specific use case. And every, every percentage increase uh, count heavily. The main issue is time. We, our data scientists uh, don't have time to do that enough. So you start looking at, hey, if I don't have time for that, for humans to do this, can computers do it? Can computers really, you know, either brute force, heuristics, et cetera, try everything out that could be tried out automatically. And you're willing to invest a lot of CPU time to do that. And so this is the second use case. Um, and however, even, even with the second, I would just go now back that don't underestimate what today or even AutoML tools can do. The robots uh, are at the near uh, top of the Kaggle competitions. This is the chart from Google uh, from two years ago, 2019, for their AutoML tables product where they just applied it without any domain knowledge, without anything else to the, some Kaggle competition. Uh, and they basically got, you know, uh, in the 40s, 60s, 80s, even higher percentile of the, of the competitors without knowing anything about the problem itself, without touching uh, features, without touching anything. So even if we are in this second group, we need to be very, very aware of how far the robots have come already. And I think that the whole, whole conference today is, is about that, like how far things really are. And sometimes we're, we're not aware, and that's why we're maybe uh, doing too much stuff by hand. Um, and this is, this is just a quote from that uh, competition that Google, uh, that Google ran and how they competed against other top Kaggle teams on one specific uh, specific uh, prediction competition. And the, the interesting thing here is just our team spent most of the time monitoring jobs and waiting for them to finish. 
uh, they got to the second place without knowing anything about the problem. That's that's really really impressive in a sense that when we speak about our you know domain knowledge about everything the intuition that we build as data scientists etc. So a lot of this can be automated away. And this is basically then my final thought and the final slide coming from all that is that for our careers they're actually changing. They're bifurcating if if we if we want. Uh, on one side, we need to become really, really, really good robot, robot shepherd. We need to be able to wrangle and shepherd the uh, auto ML, this automatic tooling or uh, algorithms to just give us the result without worrying too much about the internals of the problem. On the other hand, another different uh, part of our career will be actually building auto ML tools, building the solutions for company specific use cases. Uh, where where there is actually um, a drive to invest heavily to get that last 0.01% squeeze out. And the interesting thing is that this means that the modeling, the things that we usually maybe even went into data science to do, is starting to be, you know, we need to know it, but it's almost a side job, a night shift job, something we do as a hobby, because most we either shepherd robots or automate them. Um, why am like why did I have even the the reason to have this whole presentation and to to think that this matters that uh, that uh, this is the message that that matters is because we're quite a lot hiring quite a lot heavy and a lot of times we get candidates and I offer the most exciting position I can think of which is hey you know on our dedicated auto ML team. Uh, a data scientist says, yeah, but that's not enough working with the data. You know, I would like to be in the weeds of, of, of data. And this is too much engineering because automation is, you know, a 90% engineering. And I'm like, wow, what, what am I doing wrong to, to, to not be able to sell this as the future? Um, I already kind of maybe because we see we, we are so deep into all this. We see that this is where the things are going. Well, the sexy thing for a lot of people is still data modeling. And I think we need to um, we need to realize that data modeling matters, but machines, barbarians are at our door and we need to figure out how our careers change by the fact that a lot of those things are automated, how uh, we, we decide to either invest into ourselves as kind of uh, data science automation engineers or amazingly good shepherds using the tools, not just, you know, to throw the data, but to analyze them with those tools, the biases, et cetera, but doing much less real true directly with the data jobs. Uh, that's basically my final thought. And uh, if, if you wish a career advice of how to approach uh, the, the data science uh, field in the future, and with that, I'll just repeat this. I strongly, strongly believe that we, we won't call it AutoML, of course. AutoML is right now the, the, the industry term in order to, to be able to know what we're talking about. But in the future, AutoML will be just ML. It will be just uh, machine learning AI that you throw at the problem and get a good solution 99% of the time. And then maybe you have uh, um, either time or reason to invest much more to go deeper. Uh, and with that, I'm super happy uh, to listen to other talks in this conference. I think uh, we'll, we'll hear about this, the reality of uh, on the ground of what I was talking about here on more, uh, more abstract lab. Thank you.